We're living through a very transformational period right now. Of course, the buzz around generative AI, but also the advancements with technology, as well as the amount, the volume, and the quality of innovation that's happening all around us. Not only that impacts our businesses on a day-to-day -day basis, but also our personal lives as well. But if you really think about the drivers of the innovation and what is actually driving it, you'll come across that data always shows up as one of the greatest drivers there. And not just the data itself, it's the data, but also the ability to make some meaningful sense of it. We at CoreLogic have built a very modern 21st century data and analytics manufacturing plant around property and location data that powers the US real estate economy. And that's what we're going to talk about today. My name is Anand Singh. I am an executive at CoreLogic, focused on location intelligence. And when we talk about location intelligence, it's all about harnessing the power of unmatched, unparalleled property and location data, combining that with the power of geospatial capabilities, and creating some market-changing insights that we drive into our customers through our products and solutions. So three things we're going to do today. I'm going to introduce you to who CoreLogic is. We're going to talk about what that unrivaled property and location data is. And then we're going to look into some solutions that, again, use the power of this property and location data to create some very innovative insights that we deliver into the market. So let's start with who CoreLogic is. Just by the numbers, you look into the US real estate economy, it's valued at $43.5 trillion. That's the single biggest asset class in the planet. And our data at CoreLogic is powering a large part of that. And how do we do that? We mastered about 157 million properties and parcels across the US. That covers residential, agricultural, commercial, vacant lands, you name it. It's the entire property ecosystem in the United States. And it's not just by, done by one or two data sources only. It's 22,000 data sources that we have acquired, accumulated, built into our supply chain, processed, transformed, built analytics and insights on top of that power all these product and solutions. What it results in is more than five and a half billion property and location records that sit within our data supply chain powering all these solutions. And not just the data itself, we've also done a tremendous job around building data science models and the analytics on top of it. Whether it's about valuations of properties, whether it's about understanding different risks that impact a property, or even the generative AI models. And you'll see some examples in the presentation here of as well. So all of this powers the data, the combination, the analytics, the science thereof, again, geospatial techniques to go with it, that create the number of solutions that we have at CodeLogic. And who uses them? We're talking about the entire gamut. Everyone cares about property. Everyone cares about real estate data. Yes, there are the regular core markets. You think about real estate professionals, agents, brokers, mortgage lenders, servicers. But this information is also very, very valuable to all the other markets. Think about telecommunication companies trying to make decisions around where to invest. Where do I expand my infrastructure? Think about oil and gas companies, energy, utilities, construction, engineering. Everyone cares about good property and location data to, to get the insights so that they can use it for decision making. And we're talking some big numbers here. CoreLogic product and solutions are used by more than a million and a quarter of real estate professionals, more than 10,000 mortgage lenders and banks, 5,000 insurers, 350, 400 of hedge funds and market leaders, and hundreds of customers in all the other markets around telecommunication, oil and gas, energy construction, engineering, et cetera. That's what the power of data, and if you do it right with the data science and analytics techniques on top of that, can deliver for you. Now let's talk about what that data actually is. I've been talking about its unmatched, unparalleled data. And it's not just a singular data about a property, we're talking about a whole ecosystem. I spoke about the 22,000 data sources in how they all culminate together in creating what you see as Property 360. We're talking about understanding location of properties, not only the lat long points, but also physically where they're located, the risk associated with them. Not only the current risk, but also the climate risks that are going to be posed to them in the coming future as well. We're talking about deep attribution for every structure in the United States. 
thinking about what is the age of the building? What is the first floor height of the building? So when a hazard hits me, am I going to get the same level of impact as the building next door to me? We're talking about neighborhood information, livability scores, sales information, ownership about every property, valuation, of course, we spoke about that. And you see on the left side some impressive numbers that power this data. Of course, we spoke about 157 million properties that we manage, but they also come with more than 200 million addresses, 175 million structures. We manage and create more than 40 plus natural hazard data science models, more than 100 geospatial layers that are part of our product and solutions. We build up more than 2 billion tiles on a monthly basis, and we're using Carto for that. More than a billion images around properties. And of course, it's all part of our data supply chain. So everything that happens around a property on a day-over-day -day basis, we're processing more than 200,000 documents that are OCR'd, NLP, on a daily basis within our supply chain as well. That's the power of data that fuels these product and solutions. But let's take a look at what it actually harnesses into. We've spoken about all this data, we've spoken about the science and analytics. I'm going to showcase three solutions that we have at CoreLogic that are great examples of how this data comes together to build solutions that deliver the insights into the market. The first one we're going to talk about, we call it CLIP. CLIP stands for CoreLogic Integrated Property. At the heart of it, it's only a number. It's a number that brings the entire property data together, geospatially, property attribution-wise, understanding everything around a property. But it's so much more than just a number. The number is only the unique identification of a property. Think about social security number for every person. Think about a VIN number for every car. But what you see on the screen, if you look into the left side, all the different kinds of data that we collect across location, the imagery and the attribution that we're able to extract out of that imagery, understanding every structure and the characteristics thereof, understanding what is in my neighborhood, liens, evaluation, climate, hazard risk, we'll speak about that a little bit more as well. All of this data that we spoke about as Property360 comes together combined within this clip umbrella. Here is another example because we're not just focused on the breadth or the depth of data, it's also about understanding how that property and the location data is advised across the board when you're physically locating a property on a piece of land. You look into the layers on the left side, We've got the best parcel data in the United States. We spoke about 157 million parcels that we manage. But along with parcels, we're building many, many analytics layers on top of it that allow somebody to extract and glean the insights that they care about for decision-making in their own markets and industries. You look here about land parcels, the lighter blue boundaries here, structure footprints across the US, the 175 million of those in darker blue boundaries, 200 million address points related to every parcel and structure that we have in the US, and then all the other analytics layer. We capture a lot of point of interest data, business firmographic data, neighborhood data, risks, mobility data, and some of the other analytics layers that just keep piling on on top of this data as well. Of course, when we talk about spatial data science and geospatial, it's not the insights from one layer only. It's what you can actually glean from the intersection of multiple layers coming together. So if I'm looking for a property that, hey, I want a property that's drivable distance to a coffee shop, drivable distance to my home, but I also don't want to deal with wildfire situation. I want to be close to a point of interest. I also don't want to be impacted by climate change in 10 years. You're talking about intersection at multiple levels, analytics done at multiple levels to get you to those kind of insights for decision making. That's what CLIP and the power of Property360 brings together for us. How it's actually done under the hood? It's an amalgamation of multiple AI and ML models. We do precise location inference, again, not only on the location or the geocode of the property itself, but everything surrounding it, how the boundaries and polygons are formed around it. It's also based on a number of uh, uh, tier matching algorithms in understanding when you're dealing with conflicting information across the board, who do you trust? How do you trust it? How do you actually create the best version of truth? That's under the hood in how CLIP comes together. And once CLIP is formed, it's all about unlocking it for access. And all the customers that I spoke about across many, many markets and industries are actually bringing their portfolio to CoreLogic to say, can you give me the insights related to properties in my portfolio? 
And what's the unlock around that? It is Clip. Not only the APIs and services around that, but of course, we have enabled it with an LLM. Now you can actually come in, use the power of generative AI, and have a conversational experience with Clip. You'll see on the left side, having a conversation around, show me properties in a particular area. I only care about where there is no wildfire risk or only properties that are more than four bedrooms. You can now have that conversational experience that actually impact what you see on the right here is the actual insights related to the conversation that you're having with the Clip system, as well as the changes on the map as well. So all the map tiles, the layers thereof, are also getting impacted by the same conversation driven by LLM and the generative AI experience. That was one solution. The second one I'm going to talk about is one of our newer product offering. We call it identifying growth. And when we talk about identifying growth, it's, it's very key to many, many markets. It's about understanding where the growth and construction activity is happening and is going to happen. And again, just like what we saw with Clip, it's not just based on the geospatial layer. It's a combination of what we have from property analytics combined with geospatial techniques that allow us to put a product together like this. What we're doing is actually extracting a number of different signals. Think about when an investor has acquired a land, when a builder has owned a land, when subdivisions happen, when, when do we see actual construction activity that we can extract out of satellite imagery, when the permits actually get issued, when the roads get laid out so that there are new addresses in the region. It's a newer product that we're seeing big, big fan base coming from telecommunication companies that are looking to understand where growth is happening so they can expand their infrastructure. They can expand to understand where do I lay out my broadband lines, where do I expand my 5G coverage. It's getting a huge fan base from energy and utility companies, again, a great expansion use case. We're getting great reception from logistics companies who are trying to understand where do I expand my delivery and routing planning. So all of that is, again, a combination of property attribution, understanding what's happening at a property level. Combine that with geospatial techniques. We're thinking about spatial adjacencies. If something, if a construction activity is going on in my neighborhood, how does it impact me? Is my area something that is actively getting developed? So all these signals that get extracted out and then combined with the data science techniques that we have, you see the historical trends that we are able to capture. Not every builder operates at the same wavelength. Not every region is developing at the same pace. So it's all about understanding the historical trends to say, yep, in this region, something that we have seen specifically coming out of the pandemic, we have seen great amount of growth because of the tendency of that region, because of the historical trends. It's a combination of the signals that we're able to extract out of the data, geospatial technique, and then spatial data science come together. That's our second showcase solution. The last one that I'm going to showcase is our climate risk offering. And when we talk about climate change and climate risk, it's not just about predicting whether or not there will be a climate risk. That's not the business that we are in. What we are trying to do is to understand if there is a level of impact because of climate change, what will be the financial risk to every structure in the United States? And how do we do that? I've spoken it multiple times now. Take great analytics coming out of the property data, and in this case, we're using our deep understanding of every structure in the US, understanding that how old am I as a building? What is the roof type, roof age of my building? What is the construction material that was used in my building? What is my first floor height? So if climate change results in a rise in the sea level, am I going to get impacted in the same way as my next door? Maybe not, because I have a higher first floor height compared to my neighbor. All of that is deep building characteristic and attribution. We combine that with the IPCC, if you're familiar, it's the International Panel for Climate Change. The models and the reports that they produce, we use supercomputers to downscale it down at a location level. Combine that with all the hazard climate peril models that we have around, and it's not limited to one peril only. We have models around earthquake, storm surge, hurricane, um, you, hailstorm, you name it, wildfire. It's amalgamation of different climate perils and hazard models that come together, again, combined with deep property analytics, geospatial techniques to come up with what is the financial risk for every structure in the United States. The ingredients that go into it, I spoke about it, property data, geospatial data, a deep understanding of the location, financials, understanding what the reconstruction cost is for every building, different perils, and of course, the IPCC models. And these are the kind of stuff where 
the granularity of the data actually starts to matter. We see a lot of models out there in the industry, especially open source as well, that will actually do climate change prediction and the risk assessment at a neighborhood or a broader geographical level. That's not what we do. The granularity is what is important here. You see an example here, particularly this building is the one that is highlighted. It is actually the one that has a different financial risk rating compared to its entire neighborhood, particularly because of the factors that I stated earlier. It's a, it's a different building, different age, different construction material, different first floor height. Different sea levels are going to impact it in a different way. Wildfire is going to impact it in a different way. That's where granularity really starts to impact. We're already serving this data to government agencies across the federal government. A lot of corporates that are using this data to understand the risk associated to their portfolios as well. Again, a great example of what you can do by combining the power of data, the analytics that goes with it, and the spatial data science techniques. Those are some great showcase examples that I was able to showcase today. I'm going to wrap up my talk here today. I'm going to be here all day. Uh, I know we don't have a lot of uh, time for Q&A, but happy to have a chat with anyone around data, analytics, spatial data science. That's all what we do. That's all what we breathe in. So thank you for this opportunity and great conference. Ahead.